Hello developers. This video is part of our playlist where we're building a fully custom YouTube player using the iframe JavaScript API. Let's continue building. In this part, we'll focus on a specific JavaScript feature and connect it to our custom UI using the YouTube API. Let's get started. Let's start by understanding the first set of variables we've declared at the top of the JavaScript file. These variables are the foundation for how we control and track the YouTube player through JavaScript. First, we have player. This is the most important one. It will hold the actual YouTube player instance that we create using the iframe API. Once the player is initialized, we use this variable to control playback, volume, progress, and everything else. Next is duration, which we set to zero. This will store the total duration of the video in seconds. We'll use it to calculate percentages for the seek bar and to format the time display next to the progress bar. Since we don't know the duration at the start, we initialize it as zero. Then we have last volume, which starts at 100%. This is used to remember the previous volume level before the video is muted. So when a user clicks mute, we can bring the slider to zero. And when they unmute, we restore the volume to what it was before. Finally, we declare seek bar and volume slider. We don't assign them values yet. Instead, we'll store references to these elements later when the player is ready. This allows us to update their values, styles, and interactions more easily from different functions in the script. On YouTube iframe API ready. This function is the very first thing the YouTube iframe API looks for when it finishes loading. You don't call it yourself. You don't attach it to an event. The API automatically runs this function as a callback when it's ready. That's why the function name must be exactly what you see here, because YouTube expects it. Inside this function, we are telling YouTube to create a new player instance on our page. We are not using a traditional iframe. Instead, we've given YouTube a container in our HTML, a div with an identifier where the player will appear. Here we are saying, create the video player and place it inside this container. Then we configure the player using a set of options. The first option is the video identifier. This is the unique code for the YouTube video we want to load. You can replace this with any video identifier from any public video. Next comes a group of settings called player variables. These variables control how the player behaves visually and functionally. We are turning off the default controls because we are building our own. We are disabling branding to make the player look cleaner. We are hiding related videos, so no suggestions appear at the end, and we are turning off the default title and video info. All of this makes the player minimal, just the video itself. No YouTube UI, no extra elements. We're preparing a blank canvas so our own UI can take full control. Finally, we pass a set of event listeners. These are like little hooks that run at specific moments in the player's life. The first one is called on ready. YouTube calls this when the video is fully loaded and can be controlled. We'll use it to access duration, volume, and attach our custom controls. The second one is called on state change. This one runs whenever the video starts playing, pauses, ends, or buffers. We'll use it to update the UI, like switching icons or showing the play overlay. So in summary, this function is our bridge between the YouTube API and our own interface. It tells YouTube where to place the player, which video to load, how the default interface should behave, and what to do when the player is ready or when it changes state. Once this runs, YouTube inserts the actual player inside our HTML and hands us full control through JavaScript. That wraps up this part of the JavaScript logic. We've connected more of our UI to the player and you've seen how the YouTube API gives us full control over playback and behavior. In the next video, we'll continue building on this until our player becomes fully interactive and complete. Keep going through the playlist and I'll see you in the next part.